Hey, Shmero. Looks like we're a little lost over here. No problem, Beryl. I got plenty of extra kosher food. <laughs> and listen, cut the jokes over here. This is serious. We're out in the desert, and we are really lost. You think you're lost? Eh, who said that? Uh, I don't know. Maybe your stomach talking. You want a kosher salami sandwich? No, I'm serious. Who was that talking? It's me, the pyramid behind you. What? Oh my gosh, did that pyramid just talk? Uh, I don't know, maybe I'll give him some chicken soup. Hey, you up there, what happened to your nose? Okay, you Joes, don't make fun. Don't you know the story from the Torah? Oh yeah. God destroyed the land of Egypt with the ten plagues. Hey, looky here, Shmeral. We stumbled over here into the land of Mitzrayim. Ho oh, ho pretty cool. Hey, you know, maybe we can get rich selling water like the Plague of Dom. Uh, I think the Plague of Dom is long over. Uh, anyway, why are two Jews coming to visit me in the ruins of ancient Egypt? Uh, well, actually, sir, we were looking for a nice place to spend a very nice relaxing vacation, you know, some, uh, inspire ourselves, you see? Get inspired, looking for some inspiration, and of old boring Brooklyn. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Well, you should look elsewhere. Don't you realize that this land was destroyed by Hashem, God, because it lacked spiritual inspiration? Oh, I always wondered why God was so mean to this land. I mean, you know, ten plagues and everything. Such a beautiful land of Egypt. You know, what did they do to deserve all this destruction? Yeah, you know, that's a very good question. You know, Hashem is very kind and just God. Why did he do all this? Believe me, we deserved it. We were the most wicked and corrupt immoral society that the earth had ever seen. Oh. And you're humble, too. <laughs> <laughs> Cut the funny jokes. It's not nice to make fun of your enemies, even after they've fallen. Or become ugly statues with broken noses. <laughs> 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 All right, the two of you. Stop it, or I'll start a sandstorm. Oh, okay, okay, mister. Okay, so tell us about this. So you're telling me that the Egyptians deserved... That they should be punished, huh? Oh, yeah, I remember learning this back in school in Vayikra Parak Yudchas, that's chapter 18, that God tells the Jewish people, Kemasi, Eretz Mitzrayim, Lo Sasu Lachem, do not perform the actions of the Egyptians. That's right. Do not perform the actions of the Egyptians or the Canaanite peoples. There was a reason that God destroyed these wicked peoples. And put you there in a place to be the light unto the nations and teach the world the ways of Hashem. Ah, so, uh, uh Shmerel, what are we doing over here? I mean, this this is not a great place for two Jews to be hanging out over here. Uh, I don't know, Beryl, uh, how do we get out of here? Doom, 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 doom. Hey, yeah, uh, Shmeral, it's getting cloudy over here. What's going on? Uh, Beryl, I think a cloud has come down from the heavens. Maybe we better climb in. Hello, Shmeral and Beryl, two lost Yidalach. You are way out of your element. Hop aboard, and I will take you to Hashem's promised land. Hey, do you have some kosher food on this flight? No, Shmeral and Beryl, this is going to be a quick flight, but you brought a lot of kosher food of your own. Okay, bye, Mr. Egyptian uh, Statue Man. Bye-bye, my friends, and stay out of trouble. Whoa, this is so cool. Shmeral. Yeah, Beryl, this is wild. So, the two of you came looking for inspiration in the land of Egypt. Well, that is the wrong place, my friends. Let me tell you that Hashem has promised 
the B'nai Yisrael. But first, I think it's time for you guys to get a little lesson in the Torah that you might have forgotten. Uh, I love lessons in the Torah. Hey, are there snacks involved? No, Shmerel, but sit back and relax and listen to the words of Ayikra, Parak Yudches. Okay. All right, Rebbe, I'm pointing to the place. Hey, look, it says, Kemase Eretz Mitzrayim Asher Yishav Temba Lo Tasu. Uh, I know what that means. That means you should not do like the actions of the land of Egypt that you have dwelled there. That means that you should not go according to the ways of the Canaanites that I'm going to bring you there. Hmm, what did these guys do that was so terrible anyway? Oh uh, yeah, that's my question. Well, Shmeril and Beryl, they did a lot of immoral things. But what's important for you to know... Es mishpatai tasu vet chukotai tishmeru lelechet behem ani Hashem elokechem. You should do my laws and even my chukim, which you don't understand, because I am Hashem your God. Oh yeah, and then look, there's a reward. Ushmartem et chukotai vet mishpatai asher yaseh otam haadam vechai behem ani Hashem. That means that you should God my laws and my statutes, that a person will do them and live. Whoa, that means that if we perform God's mitzvot, we will live, not like those Canaanites. Yeah, but you know, Shmerel, at the end of the day, a person passes away in this world. Oh, you know, I remember something from Rashi. Rashi says that not only in this world does a person live, even in the next world, a person will live after they pass away, Hashem will bring them into Olam Haba, the world to come, to get a reward for all the good things and mitzvot that they did in this world. Oh, wow. Okay, I'm ready to go to Israel. Not so fast. First, let's take a brief stop in Perak Yudchet and to read some important laws that the Egyptians and the Canaanites used to transgress and... Hashem did not want the Jewish people to transgress these. Okay, here we go! Whoa! Where are we? I have no idea. Tweet, 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 tweet! Hello, Shmeril and Beryl! It is me, the Yona, the lovely dove! Uh, hi, Yona, the lovely dove! What are we doing over here? Well, we're just going to make sure this Jewish couple over here about to get married does not perform a forbidden wedding. You see, in Vayikra Perak Yudchet, God tells us not to be like the Egyptians and the Canaanites. One of the things that they would do is the sins of Arayot, of marrying forbidden relatives. Oh, like what type of forbidden relatives? Well, give me a moment. I have a whole list. I'll be right back. Whoop! Okay, Chatan and Kala, this is a Yona the Dove inspection, just to make sure you're not having a forbidden union. Um, is Here is the list of the relatives the Torah says that one may not marry. Is this wedding taking place with any one of these? A father or a mother? No. Stepmother? Nope. Sister? Nope. Granddaughter? Nope. Half-sister? Nope. Paternal aunt? What's a paternal aunt? I don't know. I think it comes from your paternal. Uh, okay. Well, it's not my ma paternal aunt. What about your maternal aunt? It is not my maternal aunt. Your uncle's wife? No. Daughter-in-law? No. Sister-in-law? No way. Mother and daughter? Absolutely not. A woman who is in need of impurity? Nope. Committing adultery? Someone who is already married? Nope. And finally, the Torah mentions not to give your children to the Molech God that was one of the most corrupt and immoral things those Canaanites used to do. They would worship a God by putting their children in fire. Absolutely not. Can we get on with this wedding already? We're not any of those who on earth would do these things. Yeah, I mean, that's absolutely ridiculous. Well, you know, 
Shmerel, that's why Hashem had to do away with these terrible people. This is some of the examples of the way that they lived. All right, I'm ready to go on to Yerushalayim. Wow, here we are in Yerushalayim, Irakodesh. What's going on down there? Hey, Shmerel, it looks like we're in time for Birchat Kohanim by the Kotel, the blessing of the Kohanim. Wow, look at that. Hashem truly has blessed the Jewish people, Am Yisrael Chai, thousands and thousands of years after those Egyptians and Canaanites are gone, the Bnei Yisrael in Yerushalayim live on and bless on. Whoa, this is so cool. Hey, Shmerel, what happened? I thought we were in Yerushalayim. Oh, it is me, uh, Yonah the Dove. I just have one little detail to help you remember, you see. In Parakul Chet and Vayikra, that's chapter 18. We need a memory trick to help remember it. Well, okay, Mr. Dove, go on. What is it? Well, you see, chapter 18 is chapter Dove. Dove? How is chapter 18 chapter Dove? Well, I'll explain it to you. You see, according to our memory trick, it works like this. The D has inside a hidden one. Uh, okay, I've heard of this before. The vowels don't count. Okay. And the V, well, that's a little bit complicated, but you see, the V, any sound that you make with the V, with your lips closed together like V, or the F, like F, or F, P-H. Uh-huh. Okay, I get it, I get it. So the V, the F, and the PH are all related because the lips go together. That's right. And there is in script, if you make the letter F like this, it sort of looks like an 8. You see? The F equals the 8. So the F sound, or the V sound, is also changeable with the F sound because they both involve... Sticking your lips close together and making a V or F. Try it. Uh, okay, I'll try it. V, F. Hey, he's right. You gotta put your lips in the same position, pretty much. There you go. You're getting it. So F and V are related, and the script F looks like the 8. Uh, okay, so this is chapter Dove. Very cool. So, in chapter Dove, what do we learn? Well, very simple. You don't need much silly stories. You learn about how to be a kosher lovebird and only marry the one who is kosher, like me, Yona the kosher lovebird, and not to marry the wrong ones, like those wicked Egyptians or the Canaanites. Oh, really cool. And we also learn that God promises that we will stay in Israel forever if we keep these laws. Uh, if we don't, unfortunately, God promises to send us out of Israel. But I think that already happened a long time ago. Well, what are we waiting for? We want Mashiach now!